It's my esteemed privilege to welcome one of the city's long-standing partners to present to the city council today. Open Signal is probably invisible to the viewers at home, but they're the reasons that our meetings reach hundreds of thousands of Portland households through cable television. They are the largest community media center in the entirety of the Pacific Northwest, and they offer low-cost education as well as media production studios and over half a million dollars of equipment to the public free of charge. In this era of so-called fake news, in which citizens' journalism is more important than ever, Open, Signally, Open Signal, formerly called the Portland Community Media, is providing avenues for everyone to create and broadcast their unique stories. At the conclusion of our presentation today, as I just mentioned, I'll read a proclamation. But first, we'd like to welcome our first panel from Open Signal. I'd like to welcome Justin Harn, the Executive Director, Rebecca Burnell, the Director of Strategy and Development, Natalie Sept, Government Affairs Advisor, and Carlos Lasunet to present. Come on up and welcome to Portland City Council. As you may know, uh, Open Signal. Portland Community Media is a grantee of Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission. Uh, we're overseen by the Office of Community Technology within the Bureau of Revenue Services. We come to City Hall today at the culmination of two years of thoughtful planning, hard work, and outreach. In 2015, the board of Portland Community Media launched a strategic planning process that set up a course to reflect digital technology needs in the 21st century, make better use of our assets, and take an assertive approach to addressing equity. In the past two years, we've hired new leadership staff, we've created new programs, we've renovated our building, all of which led to tripling our community engagement. Our staff and board are growing to more accurately reflect the community that we serve. 48% of our staff and 66% of our board are people of color. Every council session, committee hearing, and community meeting associated with the City of Portland is recorded for the public to see. Our team is honored to be a key part of sharing your message beyond City Hall's walls. In 2017, we broadcast a total of 148 city council meetings. Um, and I'm not sure if you folks know this, but this is all being filmed. Uh, I want to switch really quickly to Janelle, our director of production services, who uh, oversees these productions on, a, on, a, on the daily. I was struck on the 148. No wonder I'm tired. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, for youth, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we are the largest community media center in the Pacific Northwest with a 10,000 square foot media facility, two media production studios with full green screen cyclorama, and a large studio that's 2,000 square feet. Uh, Open Signal provides five cable channels airing local and independently produced content reaching 400,000 homes in the Portland metro area. We provide programming in English, in Spanish, Chinese, Farsi, and Russian. One of the biggest benefits of our media equipment library, which is valued at over $650,000, uh, including professional grade cameras, uh, lighting, microphones, iPads, MacBook Pro laptops, fully loaded with Adobe Creative Cloud software, and more. The public is invited to check out this equipment totally free of charge in order to create content to air on our channels. We're a proud member of the Digital Inclusion Network and committed stakeholder to the Digital Equity Action Plan. We're excited to support the Digital Inclusion Summit later in May by offering resources, space, and staff connections to help lead the nation in the mission for digital access and equity, along with Comcast, Free Geek, Multnomah County Library, Prosper Portland, Work Systems Inc., Elders in Action, Portland Public Schools, and many others. Our education for youth and adults provides affordable beginner and advanced classes covering camera and production studio operation, editing, animation, and more. This provides accessible workforce training for people who can't afford higher education or unpaid internships. We offer education in both English and Spanish at the best rates in the city. In the last half of 2017, 48% of Open Signal's adult students reported annual income under $30,000. And here's a photo of uh, one of our classes that we taught in Spanish. For youth, we offer after-school programs <clears throat> Summer camps and a longtime partnership with Open School North, an alternative middle school for non-traditional learners who have left our public school systems. 
Our community events, including our annual block party, bring together the neighborhood on Northeast Martin Luther King Boulevard, where we are proud to be located, and provide screenings, immersive media events, and exhibitions. We're serving more of the community than we ever have. In a single year, we tripled the number of Portlanders that we engage through events, education, cable broadcast production, and community partnerships. In light of all the success, we were thrilled to host United States Representative Susan Bonamici back in the spring. As a co-chair of the STEAM Caucus and vice-ranking member of the Committee on Education and Workforce, we discussed opportunities with her for growth in arts interdisciplinary training for kids and adults. And even better, we were honored to have a couple of you attend our open house events. Uh, here is uh, Commissioner E. Daly kicking off our grand reopening in February 2017, and Commissioner Fish at our open house in May. Thanks so much for attending those events. On behalf of everyone at Open Signal, we'd like to thank you again for allowing us to preserve our entire budget in the last fiscal cycle. We're doing more with your dollars than ever before. I'm so proud of the work that we've done, and I know that this is just the beginning. We couldn't have gotten to this place without the support of the city. Uh, thank you for believing in us, our mission, and the future of Open Signal, a new era of equity, access, and community impact through the arts. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Rebecca Burrell and I'm the Director of Strategy and Development at Open Signal. I'm here to share with you the progress and measurable impact that we've made since we presented to you last year. In January 2017, we introduced ourselves, reintroduced ourselves to the community as Open Signal. We did this because Portland Community Media, as an organization, was struggling. And because between our new Executive Director, new leadership staff from the Hollywood Theater and the Regional Arts and Culture Council and beyond. We had new programming and we approached equity with new assertiveness. We had truly become a new organization. We chose the name Open Signal because open symbolizes that we're here for everyone. And Signal indicates that we exist to help amplify the voices of our community. To complement this transformation, we renovated our space to be more open and flexible with the changing capacity and demands of our volunteers, students, and neighbors. Here are some images from before the renovation. Just a couple here. And uh, here's what it looks like now. And this is an image of the exterior of the building. We launched a partnership with RAC for emerging muralists last year. Local artist Molly Mendoza was the first muralist to participate. This past year, usership and community engagement on all levels have been way, way up. With the same funding from the city of Portland, we have been able to deliver exponentially more services to more Portlanders and the demand is rising. So I'm gonna uh, give you a little bit of a look of some of the numbers from fiscal year 2017. So first of all, 48% uh, more, more people checked out equipment from our library. Our producers made 4,905 individual equipment and studio reservations last year, checking out our cameras for a total of 61,666 hours and laptops for 93,069 hours. We also more than tripled class registrations. We educated 249 students in fiscal year 2016, and that jumped way up to 818 students in 2017. We also delivered more than four times as many equipment certifications, which enable our students to check out our equipment from our media library for free after they complete their class. So for comparison, we delivered 158 certifications in 2016, and that jumped up to 818 in 2017. Perhaps most significantly, we more than tripled the total number of people we engaged over the previous year through 40 free community events, classes on site at our center, as well as in schools and at public libraries, we jumped from serving 1,628 people in 2016 to 5,244 people in 2017, in just one year. As we look forward into 2018, the immediate future of Open Signal will focus on providing deep professional development for media makers who come from marginalized communities. Both locally and nationally, we know our film and TV industries are almost entirely dominated by white men. A 2016 study by the University of Southern California revealed that 87.3% of film directors are white, 
90.4% of broadcast TV directors are white, and 83.2% of cable TV directors are white. And those statistics just address race, not gender or class barriers. So as the most successful excuse me, as the most accessible media arts program in the city, we have to ask ourselves, what is our role in changing the literal face of the media field? How can we use our privilege to provide pathways into these family wage careers for women, for people of color, for those who struggle to gain access to expensive equipment, or those who simply don't think that technology is for them? In addition to the educational offerings we already provide, we will further address workforce development by providing training through our production crews. And then in the, in the middle of this year, we'll launch a fellowship for black filmmakers, which will provide deep training on the highest level gear, mentorship, and practice working on a film crew. All in all, we accomplished more this year than we ever imagined. We look forward to keeping you posted on our work as it unfolds, and thank you for your continued support and collaboration. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Carlos Lawson Set. And uh, up until last year, I was the science teacher at Open uh, School, middle school. Uh, as was mentioned before, that middle school program is an alternative school program. And I had been with the school for going on 10 years. Um, and so I have a clear understanding of a before and after our partnership with Open Signal. So it's my goal just to kind of shed some light on some of my experiences and some, um, some of what I've, I've seen. Being working in a middle school program with uh, kids who have been disengaged from their learning for whatever reason, a lot of circumstances that, um, uh, you know, financial, socioeconomical, um, you know, uh, just, just be this uh, children of color. Um, they're kids who, uh, it's not that they cannot learn, but their experience in a uh, public school or in the city, and, and their learning experience has made them feel like school isn't for them. Um, this is the population that we served. So you could imagine middle school kids, it's a challenge uh, trying to get them to be into uh, learning when they have so many roadblocks in front of them um, that interfere with their with, with their learning. Maybe they're struggling at home, and you know, as you could, I'm not going to spend a lot of time taking, talking about those stories. But it's an uphill battle for any teacher trying to teach in that situation. It's an uphill battle for any teacher, period, trying to compete with so many distractions. So. What the partnership with Open Signal made possible was for us to, um, by incorporating the media into our classes and teaching the kids about media, um, it, it just made the engagement go through the roof. Uh, the kids are already curious about, they're, they're watching, they live in the world, they're watching YouTube, they're watching, uh, you know, listening to these artists. They're basically, they're consuming all this media, but they don't see a way that they can themselves be producers. This partnership with Open Signal showed them that they have, their voice mattered, their voice matters, and they can use their voice to become producers, to participate in this economy, because we know going forward, right, our economy is, creativity is the key, right? I always tell my students, I say, uh, creativity is important because there's a lot of problems in the world and we need your creativity to help us come up with some solutions. Um, so giving them iPads and, and all these resources, I mean, it's just amazing, and, and giving them their imagination again. It gave them like their, their imagination that they could, things that they could dream up or ideas that they had, they were valid and they could make them, they could create them, right? And that's something that, you know, being disenfranchised, feeling like they don't have any power, they're realizing their potential. So as a teacher, this experience working with them was invaluable. And then to be able to use it, it's such a flexible thing. I was able to use it in my science class. It was, we used it in our art classes. You know, um, I, I had, <laughs> we, dis we, we did dissections and I had the kids uh, filming it and uh, we did nature walks, looking for things in the, in the neighborhood, different type of plants. And, and animals and to have that tool that they could use, right? And they could see that the stuff that they're learning 
goes with what what you want to do or the stuff that you're learning is important because uh, that's what it is. So, um, <clears throat> and, I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm, this is my first time ever doing something like this. So, um, you're doing great. Th that, thank you. <laughs> and then the other side of this too is when you talk about, and I always would tell my kids, 21st century skills. I always would tell my kids, I would say, you know, by the time you get ready to have a job, your resume is going to be a video or an EPK or some kind of YouTube or, you know, some kind of digital presentation. Um, they need to know how to use this stuff, how to tell stories, how to present themselves well. Uh, if they want, they could be, they have the potential to be entrepreneurs in, in that cyber world. Right to be competitive in uh, in the economy, they need these skills, and just because of their backgrounds, it's not fair that they get left out of the opportunities. So I super appreciate uh, Open Signal for leveling that playing field, opening that door, so that they see that yes, my voice matters. Yes, I can have the skills, and I can make something in this world and build something uh, with these skills. So. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> you appreciate it very much, yeah, Commissioner sure. Fish. Um, thank you. Um, the last time that I had a visit, and it was during one of your fairs, and it, the place was packed, and it was just fantastic, um, you had a little truck in the back where someone was doing a podcast. Yes, Stream PDX. <clears throat> Do you, what is the state of podcasting as part of your mission? Mm -hmm. And how do people, because it seems like a low barrier way of, of, of doing something in the media? Absolutely. How do, how do people enter? What's the door they go through if they want to do a podcast? Most definitely. So I think, um, uh, speaking to that point, we're all about accessibility. So when we were engineering and thinking about the services that we wanted to offer, we wanted to make sure that anyone could, could come to us from any background and feel comfortable telling stories. <clears throat> so for many folks, we have a professional voiceover room uh, that, that we have within our facility, but that's, that's kind of scary and intimidating for people. So we figured, in what more way could we disarm this process than we have some gear from Guitar Center, we have a, a, an Airstream trailer, and um, some simple straightforward classes that allow folks to, um, uh, to enter into that, to that world. Um, uh, we collaborate with Stream PDX to, um, to register for folks, or register folks for, for classes and workshops and offerings like we do our own. So we're looking at these sorts of partnerships for how we can kind of innovate and, um, and, and uh, advance our, our mission of connecting folks with story and technology. Well, that's great. Congratulations. Good morning. My name is Gustavo J. Ramirez. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you guys today. I'm from New York City, the capital of the world, as they say, city of doors, and yet, I've created, collaborated, and creatively excelled in open signal in one year, more so than I could have in five. I know this to be true because it happened to me. It is why I now speak with you here today. I want to tell you how when someone becomes a producer at Open Signal, how they can have a ripple effect in the community. I was working with a director to shoot a short film. She knew one of the producers at the studio. We were to shoot in Studio A, the topic social justice. I asked myself, how can I get involved with this studio? I was impressed by the caliber of the individuals, the equipment, and I found out that day that everyone was volunteering. When I spoke to a staff member, I was introduced to classes with the idea that if I was to get certified, I would be able to rent out equipment and produce work of my own. I would also be able to utilize editing suites and software. And not to mention anyone who's willing to volunteer is in the online community website switchboard as a pathway. Of course, it took tons of work on my part, but the opportunity was there. What seemed like an impossibility, now was around the corner, literally on MLK and Graham. Because of this, I began a process that would forever change my life. I had a story written, and I asked around for a team of volunteers, and I found some great people. Greg Palmer, specializing in audio. Jeremy Cook, editing and directing. Christopher Polanco, who's 16 years old, cinematography and camera. Elijah Hassan, cameras and photography, and an actress, Amy Reese. In a span of three months, we met several times, the rehearsals, production meetings, finalized the location, and rented out the, and had a rental agreement for the equipment. We shot on location, and shortly thereafter, we edited it. What amazes me most is that in three months, we got all of this done. In New York City, this would have taken me five years. 
I say this because since then, everyone working on my project has now continued to produce work of their own, involving more community members, creating new stories, and involving more, involving more members to extend the family to the Open Signal community. All the while learning new techniques, creating bigger pool of collaborators, and creating more opportunities for our community, especially for our youth. Most importantly, embarking on lifelong friendships. I don't think I can express my gratitude for Open Signals, but maybe this is a start. Open Signals, I thank you guys, and thank you guys too. Thank you, appreciate it. So good morning all. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you a story about myself, and forget that it's about me, because it's just a small example of other people who have come through Portland Community Media, now Open Signal. So I guess I was a photographer for, oh, God, I can't even remember how many years. Um, started in the 60s. Worked on uh, journalism, commercial work, advertising, and then uh, actually textbook illustration for schools. Parlayed into uh, video when I stopped doing 11 years of textbook illustration. Um, over those years, somebody said to me, uh, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I'd like to do this, but, you know, that's a little hands off. You, you don't just walk into a place and uh, start doing a video like that. Well, in 85, I did. And um, I wound up covering things across the world um, from Nicaragua to my latest one, I think on Monday, who was a uh, houseless individual uh, sleeping in a tent and explaining to me what that was like and how he did it and why he didn't come to the city and why he didn't go to shelters. Um, I give the example many times of I tried to cover stories, both interviews and speakers and events with Flying Focus Video Collective, as well as other projects where I would be a camera operator or audio or lighting with someone else's project to cover things that CNN didn't cover. Our network affiliates in <coughs> town here didn't cover. So I've gone many places across the world, as well as many places in town, to cover the voiceless, which is a cliche now, but is not a cliche if you're the person in the circumstance that has to be covered. And having access to modern equipment, reliable equipment's even better at a facility like Open Signal, PCM, has been invaluable. Um, it's n actually, during the uh, elections for Obama, I was in Denver at their facility to see what it was like there. It's much better here. Hmm. I was in New Haven in Connecticut seeing their facility and using their facility. It's much better here. I can't imagine where it's better in this country, but I know it needs to continue here. So you all know about redlining, and I'm hoping that you'll be at the speaker's demonstration um, talk in April, talking about redlining at the uh, Alberta Abbey. Let's not that happen with communications like cable access. There's been enough redlining, there's been enough red tagging on houses, Let's make sure that people have a voice to get their observations and interests out to a larger community and themselves. We need this kind of facility. It's not uh, a luxury, it's a necessity. When I was working up in Barrow and they're working with radio, they're talking to communities so they can stay in touch and stay alive, it's the same thing here. We have lots of need, 
and people are learning all the time. I'll just add this last one. Learning from OpenSignal, learning earlier from PCM, learning earlier from Portland Cable Access taught me enough to be able to teach other people. So I'm not sure of the number, but I think we have some record at uh, Flying Focus that it might have been 300. And an example of how that happens is somebody came to me once out of Eugene and wanted to know how to cover something in uh, their community. Met them at a uh, restaurant, explained the whole process to them. They went out and they did it. I haven't seen them again, but I know they got it done. <laughs> So many times, uh, the people that I teach, Flying Focus teaches, uh, the cable access facility that we're so lucky to have, have gone out and taught others. So you're doing a great thing. We hope you appreciate the benefit of it. And please keep it going. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Thanks for sharing. Hello, good morning. Morning. My name is Lisa Faust. I'm the board president of Open Signal. I've been on the board for over five years, uh, originally appointed by Commissioner Saltzman at the time when we were Portland Community Media. Um, at that time, the organization was in a much different situation, and I was asked to join the board due to my financial acumen to help steer the organization with lead current leadership at that time to a better place. Um, since joining the board, um, we've done a national search for a new executive director. As you know, Justin Harn um, was a local, our local candidate, but he outweighed the national, um, the national candidates that, that came to want to be part of what we're, what we're doing. Uh, now combined with staff from Regional Arts and Culture Council, Hollywood Theater, a committed board, um, and Justin's leadership, um, I'm proud to say that we're stronger than ever. Uh, along with new leadership, our financials at Open Signal are also stronger than ever management of resources, um, oversight by our fiscal director, outside CPAs. Um, it gives the finance committee and the board um, assurance that the organization is strong and continuing to grow. Uh, I'm encouraged by our new programming and workforce development and production services and the Open Signal Labs, an incubator for filmmakers of color, which is very exciting. Uh, we'll be becoming an even, an even more robust uh, resource in a time when media is really under siege. We have several community partners that we are proud to work with. Um, we'd like to thank our community partners, and some of them that we work with are Cleveland High School, iUrban Teen STEM Summit, Lentz Youth Initiative, Media Institute for Social Change, Multnomah County Library, National Alliance for Media Arts and Culture, Open School North, Portland Workforce Alliance. There's several. I just want to see. Got a couple more in here. Um, Sista Sista. Um, Vanport Mosaic, Vox Siren, Women in Film, and many, many more. Um, as a daughter of Cuban immigrants, I've witnessed the barriers to advancement um, that some face in this country now, perhaps more than ever. Open Signals Board and Management uh, look forward to continue to break through those barriers and continue the advancement in our community by the programming um, that we offer to the community. Um, I'm proud to be part of Open Signal because of the commitment to inclusion and equity and providing a safe space for all individuals in a time when our community needs it most. Uh, and uh, we would like to thank you uh, for your continued support of the important organization and the work that we're doing and your leadership in the, in the community and the city each and every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all three of you for sharing. So as we've seen, um, Open Signal producers are an inspiring group of activists, of artists, and community leaders. They're men and women and non-binary folks and children of all ages and ethnicities. They create content in English, Spanish, Farsi, Chinese, and Russian. In the 2017 fiscal year, our volunteer producers created 943 new TV programs. And every new program reflects an entire volunteer crew who helped with cameras and lighting, writing, costumes, and sets, on-air guests, and much, much more. These people embody community, and when they come together, they accomplish something far greater than they could as individuals. Every day at Open Signal, we are moved by the collaboration and service exhibited by our producers, by the way that people show up for other people. These producers have inspired us to introduce a new 
<clears throat> annual award, the Open Signal Community Producer Award. This is an unrestricted cash award that honors the commitment of one producer to the Open Signal community. It's not a filmmaking award, but instead recognizes the many hours they volunteered their time to make Open Signal a better place. It's about service, community, and connection. This award will be delivered annually to a producer who has given back to our organization at least as much as they've received, someone who embodies a culture of philanthropy and gratitude. This award is intended to allow the awardee the opportunity, if they choose, to create a new work. I'm very proud to award the very first Open Signal Community Producer Award to Elijah Hassan, educator, filmmaker, photographer, and Open Signal producer of more than 20 years. Elijah is a bridge builder with a profoundly generous heart. Elijah pays it forward, providing free trainings for dozens of members of our community, getting gear into the hands of people that would not otherwise have access to our services. He was the first community member to step up and volunteer to serve on our equity committee. In his personal work as a teacher and as an artist, Elijah leverages his art and actions to combat systemic oppression. He's a connector, he's positive, he's resilient. We're a stronger community because of Elijah Hassan. So again, we're so proud to present Elijah Hassan with the first ever Community Producer Award. Congratulations, Elijah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, I don't have a lot of time. I just want to say all praise to the one. And I guess I'll tell a short story. I, I was watching, um, I'm researching for a short film I'm working on. So I was watching uh, Good Night and Good Luck, which is a uh, if you haven't seen it, it's the film about uh, Ed Murrell, the CBS uh, reporter who went up against uh, McCarthy. And um, there's an opening scene where uh, he's addressing this uh, radio and TV organization. And I, I was just really struck about how he made a prediction 50 and 60 years from now what the people who were looking back at the people at that time would think about them. And I was really struck how he was right on point, or that, that story was right on point as far as uh, profit, advertisement, capitalist interests um, really impacting and influencing media, all the TV that we watch. And so I guess what I'll say in my short story is that uh, independent media is surely valuable in these times and all times. And I would suggest that we all value it. Um, it's just uh, a treasure, and you won't miss it until it's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll just leave it at that. And again, thank you very much for your support. And um, until next time. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Very good. And so with that, I have the honor of reading a proclamation. Whereas, in an era of corporate controlled media and fake news, producers from Open Signal, Portland Community Media Center, have been stewards of uncensored community storytelling since 1981. And whereas Open Signal is the largest public media center in the state of Oregon, community producers have been making use of Open Signal's resources, volunteering thousands upon thousands of hours of their own time to document locally relevant issues in English, Spanish, Farsi, Russian, and other languages. And whereas, Open Signal producers have broadcast a broader range of perspectives than we see in the mainstream media, covering issues of activism, houselessness, the police, family, faith, comedy, experimental art, and other topics that would not have a home anywhere else on the television airwaves. And whereas these producers lead vital nonprofits like Wisdom of the Elders, Vanport Mosaic, and the Flying Focus Video Collective, they are some of the most productive, community-minded, and change-making citizens in the city of Portland. And whereas at a time when basic liberties are under threat across the United States, Community television is one of the last remaining 
homes for free speech and open signal producers are stepping up to boldly share their voices, showing us it's important to communicate, stay connected, and be proud of who we are. And now, therefore, I, Ted Wheeler, Mayor of the City of Portland, Oregon, the City of Roses, do hereby proclaim February 14th, 2018, to be Producer Day <laughs> in Portland and encourage all residents to observe this day. Thank you. Commissioner Fritz. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for this presentation. It's really a good reminder of the value of community engagement and that you need training, you need equipment, you need a place, and you need people. And so thank you for providing all of those. Thank you for your service on the board. I just want thank to uh, acknowledge that this has not been an easy road to get to this place. And when I was in charge of the Office of Cable Communications and Franchise Management in my first term, um, Portland Community Media was not in such a stable condition. So I want to acknowledge Sue Disciple, who's here with us today for her leadership over many years. Um, Cece Hughley Newell, a previous executive director who really um, assisted in correcting the course. Uh, Julio Melchek, who's here today too from the Office for Community Technology, and the former leaders, Mary Beth Henry and David Olson, um, who have been huge supporters. And then thanks to my college commissioner of Fish and Commissioner Saltzman for their leadership and our insistence that we are going to keep funding Portland Community, community Media and now Open Signal. And um, for the entire council last year, um, doing the budget notes saying that we're going to look and find out what is the best place for your uh, staffing to happen within the city structure. So thank you. It's been a long road and it's really exciting to see where we are now. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Jeremy. Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, Justin, congratulations on your first year. We started our new adventures at the yes, same time, so we should check in and talk about how that's going. <laughs> um, I'm really impressed with the progress that Open Signal, Signal has made over the past few years. Obviously, this is an, a passion of mine, independent media and self-made media, and uh, if freedom of the press is guaranteed only to those who own one, access to these tools and resources um, is vital. So thank you for your work and congratulations. Just if I could just add one other comment. Um, the council is uh, working on a number of recommendations that address arts affordability, both for organizations and for artists. And we'll have something coming back soon after a council work session. And one of the things I learned in my last visit is you've got that beautiful piece of property to the east of your campus. And, and I hope that as, as you continue to grow and prosper, we collectively think about how to leverage that space because it's a dynamite address, it's an amazing space. Absolutely. And it might someday be the home for affordable art space for people that are also connected to your mission. Love it. So thank you for Let's all of your more. good work. And <laughs> can I just make one request? Yes. I know we have lots of people here from Open Signal, but there's a handful of people that actually uh, are connected to Channel 30 and broadcasting us. So we should, should we see a showing of hands of people that are actually involved in the city council broadcast? So I think they're all working. They're, they're all working. <laughs> <laughs> thank God someone's <laughs> back there working. Well, in absentia, we want to thank them because um, it is so important that the public have this access to their government, and the people that do the work are terrific. So a heartfelt thank you. Thank you. Very good. Commissioner I'd just Salzburg. like to add my accolades to Open Signals. Uh, great work over the last couple years, and Lisa in particular, thank you for agreeing to serve on the board and, and helping to really uh, bring fiscal discipline and responsibility uh, in what was needed at the time. And uh, so I really am excited about your, your progress reports. That's very exciting uh, statistics about how many people are producing and how many people are learning. And so keep up the good work. Thank you. Very good. So uh, open signal, producers, staff, let's all <coughs> council, let's gather up here and let's get a photograph.